All right, I call to order the City Council meeting for New Kalawa, Ohio, Wednesday, January 17, 2018, at 7 p.m. Mrs. Berner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lighty. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. All present. citizens of this great city. Provide us with your infinite wisdom and guide us in our daily lives. Amen.
household, average household income, unfortunately, and they all had a much higher average home value. So, um, but they all shared similar percentages, except two, of um, owner-occupied being around uh, 30 to 35 percent renters and, and uh, vacancies of five to 10 percent. Um, another point I just wanted to bring up that there are a lot of people that own expensive residential commercial properties in town because of their hard work. They have to pay much more real estate tax, but they still only get one vote if they live in town. Um, unfortunately, our income level is at the bottom third of the state. Um, and take a look at Elizabeth Township next door has money coming out of their ears. But we have many times more people. We have a much higher population, of course, than Elizabeth Township. Point is that we have a large percentage in, in town that pay little or no taxes to support. They're taking, uh, if there's too many people taking advantage of public services that aren't paying their fair share. That's a point I wanted to make. Um, and unfortunately, that's not a problem just in here in Ohio or New Carlisle, but it's a nationwide problem that voters don't have to own property or pay income tax to vote. You only have to have proof of residency. I think that government officials and politicians are missing out on a lot of money and a much better way, I feel, is a consumption tax. Some call it a sales tax. And I would hope that um, the city officials might consider that option in New Carlisle instead of a property tax or another income tax. Uh, a sales tax everybody has to pay, whether you're paying income tax or property tax. So um, I feel that's a very uh, important consideration. I just wanted to mention that. And uh, one other thing, I wanted to compliment the city on a nice Facebook page. Um, I didn't realize how important that was until I, I finished reading a book recently on uh, demographics. And I would highly recommend, I'm not going to read anything from it, but uh, anyone in business or politics or government uh, would be well to read this about learning about people. And he breaks it down into the five different 20-year demographic ranges. Um, of course, the big, big, big groups are the baby boomers, the X, Generation X, and the millennials. And just a little tidbit I am concerned about is the largest group has become the millennials or those that were born after 1980 or born in 85 and after. And according to the author, they're not responsive to radio, newspaper, or television. They're social networking gurus. Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, any, all of that stuff, which is instant communication. And I've learned recently on the news, um, because I read a lot, not only books and history and current events, but in the internet, that the social networking now has become easily manipulated by Facebook and Twitter owners, so they can be swayed politically, one direction or another, which is very scary. So we have a big generation coming on of voters and buyers that we need to be aware of, their habits, and um, I pray that <laughs> we'll get things figured out pretty soon. But thank you for letting me blow off a little bit, and uh, I appreciate everything, and keep up the good work. Who, who's the author of that book? Who's the author of the book? Um, Kenneth Gronbach, G-R-O-N-B-A-C-H. But it, it's a very good read and uh, uh, a nice breakdown of all the different uh, demographics and uh, where they're moving to and how they respond. Um, I thought um, a, a good thing that boomers like 
my life, make my life easy, save me some time, don't rip me off and I will buy from you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty well said, but that's, that's a boomer motto. And uh, that's a good one to live by, I guess. <laughs> but the, uh, the next generation is another issue. The, those born between uh, 65 and 84. And then the, the uh, Y generation of the millennials are even larger than the two previous groups. Of course, the greatest generation, those born around World War I, are fading away. And then the silent generation, those born between 25 and 44, are starting to, they're aging longer, you know, thank God, but uh, there's not near as many as there used to be either. So. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that, and, uh, and another good book that uh, I'd like to see uh, is the uh, Fair Tax book, um, and I think that would solve a lot of our country's problems and get rid of income tax, um, death tax, capital gains, uh, and uh, just have an average of around 22% consumption tax on everything new. And, and I think, I'm, I'll say one other thing, I'm looking back, tell you how old I am, I'm a baby boomer, but uh, I remember council meetings some years ago when Katie Snyder was active, <laughs> and he had an idea that I always thought kind of neat. He said, let's collect the taxes at the county seat, and then we'll send it to the state capital, and then the state capital can send what's left to Washington. That things would go a lot smoother. You know? <laughs> so I thought that was a good idea. But anyway, thank you, Art. Thank you so much, Mr. Clark, for coming. Uh, Council, you have anything? Right. Any other comments from members of the public? Moving on. This is Burner. Ordinance 18-01, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance declaring it necessary to levy in excess of the 10 mil limitation and to place on the May 8, 2018 ballot a 3.0 mil additional levy for five years for the New Carlisle, New Carlisle Fire EMS Department. Council? So moved. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance. Um, this is a ordinance, uh, first piece of legislation that will be required to put a fire and EMS levy on the ballot. This is strictly will be used for operational and capital purchases, um, as we have uh, seen and will uh, go into further detail, uh, definitely with, with some upcoming work sessions, is that we are losing out to other area agencies, whether private companies or jurisdictions, uh, in the rate of pay. And we are also will be faced with some massive capital purchases in the next few years as far as a uh, new engine and also a medic unit. So with those things being uh, known that we will need, and then also in the fact that our funds throughout the past couple years have dwindled, we have now faced the need to put this to the voters to let them decide how they want to move forward. But again, this is the first piece of legislation. After this is approved, um, I will take it up to the county auditor. They will certify our tax rates. Once those are back in my hands, um, we'll be coming back to council with a resolution to proceed. That can be introduced and voted on at the same meeting. Right now, that is projected to be on um, February 5th. Um, and that would be the second and last piece of legislation needed. Once that is done, this will be up to the voters of the city of New Carlisle. Chief Trustee, anything you want to add to that? Uh, you, city Manager pretty much covered it, but the department is it's looking right now that on a whole, the fire service on a whole is on a downward trend of hiring people. Uh, and we have to be marketable to be able to hire people. Right now, we are the lowest paid fire department in the county. And on an average, our paramedics make right at almost $3 less an hour than one in the surrounding area. Uh, right now, 
Right. Just in the general area of the department for being anywhere from $15 to $16 an hour for a paramedic part time, we're paying $12.69. Uh, right now, our paramedics are making what most department EMTs are making. And you're paying for the skill level of someone that can save somebody's life. A uh, paramedic goes to school for two years to get his paramedic license. And that school basically is two years of no life. They, they dedicate their life to that school. Uh, between classroom, ride-alongs, clinicals, everything that they have to do. Uh, and then we also have to look at the fact that after they're certified, every firefighter you need to be advanced or paramedic has to take a Miami Valley protocol test once a year. Every three years, they have to recertify their fire and their EMS certifications. We're responsible for getting the continuing education to them during that three years. Try our best, and we do get a lot of that training for free, but some of it we don't. Uh, then, then you look at outfitting a firefighter. One firefighter costs anywhere from twenty-seven hundred to three thousand dollars to outfit one fire, from boots, pants, coat, helmet, and gloves. But that gear is, is serviceable for ten years. After ten years, it cannot be used, whether it looks brand new out of the pack or not. NFPA standard states ten years. That's a large cost for us. And then we look at our apparatus. Our apparatus right now, our, our medic is a little over six years old, but it has 140,000 miles on it due to our transport distances to the hospitals. Our engine is 20 years old. And yes, there's a difference between a 20 year old engine in the city of New Carlisle to the city of David. But still, it's a 20 year old engine. It has maintenance issues. Uh, and then we just our sort of day to day operations or day to day operations as far as the firehouse, as far as other equipment. Uh, purchasing the equipment to go on the apparatus. Uh, a medic unit has to, have a, has to have a life pack. We just purchased that almost two years ago. The one life pack is $27,000. The cot that the guys, medics bring off the truck, put the patient on it, put back in the medic. That cot costs twenty seven or twenty one thousand dollars. A Lucas tool, thirteen thousand dollars or fourteen thousand um, dollars. The equipment is not cheap. <laughs> it's not, and everything has a shelf life. Our hose, our hose is good for fifteen years. Whether it's brand new, it doesn't have holes in it or not, it's still fifteen years. It will not be tested. And we have to incur those costs every year. Every year, every apparatus has to have a pump test. It has to have a ladder. All the ladders have to be tested. All the air packs have to be tested. Uh, and that's another expense every year that the fire department requires. And it's just, it's just the cost of going business. That's increased drastically from 10 to 15, 20 years. Council? Can you tell Chief what, what the cost of complete turnout here? Three thousand twenty 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 seven hundred to three thousand dollars. For what's that? I'd like to address something to you, sir. If we could please. You have several properties in the city, so you say. Let me ask a question or two. If we did have the equipment to respond to a house fire in one of your structures or somebody in your own house had a possible heart attack, we didn't have the equipment to respond, would, would you much rather spend the tax money to have the equipment and the personnel to respond to that? Of course. I'm, I'm very much aware that even though there's a lot of rental property in New Carlisle, that the property owners benefit from our fire protection and I would publish first response to police and the paramedics, of course. Um, I just, my point is that I don't think it's fair because there are so many that are benefiting that aren't paying anything. You know, uh, they don't pay income tax, they don't pay property tax. It's a tremendous problem with our school 
the schools to build the new schools. And um, they had a speaker there and explained the demographics of the area and how lousy. And, and I don't think that this has ever been resolved statewide. It's been voted on in the state legislature that we are required to, to change the funding for our schools, but it's never been done because the way we're doing it now is unconstitutional. So I, I just wanted to
This is a question for you, Chief. Um, unfortunately, we are uh, grossly underpaying our first responders. So I would like to be a little more competitive so we can keep the good people that we have. Um, my concern that I have is if this were not to pass, um, you have a laundry list of things that need to get done. Are you going to be able to replace the items that need to get replaced? And are we going to be able? Are you going to be able to maintain the equipment that you have if uh, if this weren't to pass? We'll have to look at other avenues to try to get a medic. That is our first goal right now. Is we have to purchase a medic. Uh, if not, our salaries will not increase. We will end up probably losing more people going to different areas. Um, and as far as our, our reserve. What will happen is you will not be able to be a 24-7 fire and EMS department. Right now, we, we are one of the very few departments that work 20 to 24 hours around the clock, having to for at least two in the station. Um, and a lot of the other departments work on the premises of at 6 o'clock meeting, they do a pay for call program. You get paid only if we get a call. Um, and all the area departments that we're doing that are already in the same position that we are now. Seen it. That's not working. That's basically going back to the old volunteer days. The volunteer fireman is gone. Um, the, to get someone to come and sit in a firehouse for 12 hours from 6B to 6A and their family and tell them you're only going to get paid if you get a run and we're paying you the lowest amount of money in the, in the county, it's not going to happen. And even the other departments that are paying more than what we are are having the same problem staffing in after hours like that. Uh, it, it's just not there. The, like I said, the day of the volunteer fireman is gone, and one of the reasons being is because of the strict guidelines of the state and what requirements that they have to meet to be a, a firefighter. Years ago, when I started, you came in the firehouse, I want to be a fireman. Okay, here's your book. We'll check it off as you go, and you know, you'll be checked off on this truck, this truck, and this truck, and now you're a fireman. state of Ohio and work on a part-time program that has fire and EMS, you have to be a level one firefighter and at least an EMT. The level one fire, of course, is $1,100, and that's anywhere from four to six months. An EMT course is $1,000. That's another six months. People are not going to put that type of money and that type of time into a, to get a part-time job making $11. It's just not there. Does it become something else? I have something. When it goes to the tax, I normally don't like to speak on things I don't truly know. Um, but something in my brain, back of my head, is telling me we are we can't sit there and set a sales tax for the city of New Carlisle. There are three agencies in the state of Ohio that set sales taxes. And unfortunately, we are not one of them. We can't go in and say, we want to charge an extra X amount for this. You know, we just don't have the authority to do that. I don't know much about a consumption tax. I will look into it because I think it's interesting. But for us to sit there and say, opposed to this levy, we're going to just say it costs 1% more to buy things in New Carlisle, we can't do that. So, traditionally, yes, sir. When would this um, be voted on the, the uh, May 8th? Primary election? Or yes, the, the primary. Pri primary, May 8th. Yeah. It doesn't sound like you have much time to waste. No, we don't. We, everything <laughs> has to be to the, you. to the board by February 7th at 4 o'clock. This is actually our second attempt at this, the first one we had done it, and then we realized the state of Ohio changed some rules about the language that needed to be on the ordinance, so that's why we're here today. Normally, we would already we, we, we'd be on the second part done. I'd be going to the county, actually. Today, I would have went to the county and submitted the final piece of resolution. So, Council, anything else? Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Light? Yes. Passes six to zero. Other business? Penny? I just have one quick thing. Mr. Clark, thanks for coming and speaking about the issue that you talked about. I actually read the fair tax book. I'm a huge fan of Mike Huckabee. 
And so uh, know all about it. And I think it would be something that the national level definitely needs to look at. And, uh, we have mobile office hours with our congressman. I uh, can't remember the, when the next date is, but I'll get you that. I'll email you it so that you can voice your concern to Congressman Davis. All right, good. Good. Just making sure. All right. Uh, and council, anything else? No. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. What was I supposed to say? I, uh, uh, I move we adjourn. Oh, yeah, yes. yes. We are.